Welcome on into the Wolverine.com podcast. Clayton Safey here with Ant Wright, former Michigan basketball player, current content creator for the Wolverine and on three sports. And he's all over Twitter. So find him there as well. Doing a bunch of college basketball, NBA, uh, always a part of the big conversation around Michigan, uh, sports in general. Ant, happy Saturday. How's it going? It's going well. A really good slate of games. Uh, I'm going to be watching a lot of games starting at 12. I can't wait for this Memphis Tennessee game. That's going to be a, a lot of fun. It just got canceled. As what? We speak. Yeah, an hour before tip. COVID within Memphis. Yeah, I just saw that on Twitter before we went live here. So, what is going not on? To, not that to. Just, that just. Oh, brother. Well, there's still Purdue Butler, I think, right? Purdue there is. That's like a 15 point spread. Oh, that just. It feels like 2020 all over again. All these yeah. games just getting canceled. Not even like postponed. Like a lot of these games are getting straight up canceled. And uh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's uh, scary to like see what's gonna. What are the next steps? Like, are we gonna have another? I don't even want to say the S word or uh, the L word. I don't want to say shut down or lockdown. Like that's. I don't know, man. I, I know. know. I'm with you. Uh, scary, so, scary stuff. Scary, yeah. Scary, scary stuff. Let's talk a little Michigan basketball. Um, you know, obviously a decent amount to get to due to some of the struggles. I mean, we talked last week about the kind of some of the strides they were making in those two wins that they were able to, to get. And then they, uh, you know, come back with a loss to Minnesota at home last Saturday night. And, you know, that's a game that kind of, you know, if you let's say you turn things around and you put together a great, you know, final 18 games of the Big Ten, you'll be fine. But, you know, if you're not going to win that and you're you know not going to turn this corner, you know, we're getting near January 1st here when things really ramp up. Uh, it's going to be tough for you. So, I mean, so much went wrong, especially in that second half. But I guess where do you put most of the blame in that game? Um, honestly, it comes down to. Juwan has to find out how to play Musa. And I don't think he knows how to do that yet. No, I don't think the staff either. If you look at the advanced analytics, um, the way that they're using Musa in the rotation, um, it's it looks good, right? From a visual set of eyes, it looks good. But if you really dig deep, um, a lot of negative grades for that for that particular lineup. And that part is um, that part is a little bit scary for me. Um, you know, slowly learning that Musa cannot play the five because uh, he's like negative like twenty something uh, when he's at the five, and a lot of that has to do with the Dickens is not not on the floor, right? But but he but he can't play to play the five. Um, something happens with the offense and the rotations when he's in the game. They need to figure out how to fix that. That's going to be the biggest thing to find out over the next three games or so before we get into Big Ten play. Uh, they need to find out what's going on and how to work Musa into it. Um, they won two games in a row, right? They beat San Diego State, then they beat – San Diego State, who just had like a really good win against St. Mary's last night, um, they beat San Diego State pretty easily, right? In that second half, they yeah, really, great second they half. really put it on them. Uh, and then Nebraska, I know Nebraska's Nebraska, but the way that they were able to get floor spacing, whether they sh they didn't even need to, need to, sh to like shoot the ball well for you to see them be able to move the ball, pop the ball, see the right guys who are open, being able to communicate certain things, being able to um, really, really gel, right? Um, Musa didn't play in either one of those games. I think he played like two minutes of the San Diego State game. Yep. He but played, you yeah, he started and then came out and never never returned. Yep. Right. So uh, this is me not blaming Musa at all whatsoever, but you have a guy that sits – when you have probably your three best halves in terms of offensive movement and all that, and then plugging him for 32 minutes right away was a little odd to me. 
It's a little bit odd. I'm not saying T. Will and Brandon Johns is better. I'm not saying that. Um, but for those two guys to go from a combined over 40 points, over 40 minutes played, and then get spot minutes the way that they had, I'm not sure what that does to them with their confidence. I'm not sure what that does or what that did to the offensive flow. Um, uh, that was that was a bit odd. Um, also, uh, Frankie Collins does deserve more minutes. I'll say that. Uh, Devontae also is coming off of three games where he's, he has 12 assists and one turnover. So that's a big plus moving forward. Um, but – Against Minnesota, you saw they're starting to guard him like Tum Tum Nairn. Remember Tum Tum? Yes. Where if he had the ball up top, the other defender would just sit in the middle of the paint and not care what he's doing ever. They guarded him like that. And I and I'm I'm pretty sure you saw the breakdown where he had a wide open shot anywhere from like from 15 to about 22 feet. And if you're a Division One point guard and you're the starting point guard at Michigan, you know, you've had Trey Burke, Derek Walton, even Simpson takes that shot. You've had Mike Smith now. I mean, you have got to be able to take and make that shot. And if you're not able to, to uh, take and make that shot, someone else has to run point. The issue is Frankie also would be in a similar situation there where they can guard him very similar. So they have to find out, you know, who's who is going to be able to take and make big shots in the pick and roll late in games. Sorry, I just rambled and ranted, but um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, but that's that's kind of where I'm at. You know, we're 10 games in. We should start to see some sort of adjustments, some sort of answers. Um, they just came off probably Jawan's worst loss, in my opinion. Yeah. A Minnesota team who I know they they only have one loss, but let's be real, this team was voted 14th in the Big Ten for a reason. They have 13 new faces, a whole new coaching staff. They have no transfers who came in from other Power Six conferences, you know, because I also include the Big East in that in that like high major mold. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest transfer came from George Washington, the Atlantic 10. Jamison Battle is a very good player. Um, but you can't have a group like Michigan, what their aspirations were coming into this year, um, pretty much get dominated in that second half by a team with a transfer from Lafayette, uh, you know, uh, Luke, Luke, Luke Lowy from William and Mary, mm -hmm. a team who like really didn't shoot the ball great. No. You just had to guard two guys. That's it. That's it. You had to guard Peyton Willis and Jamison Battle. And those guys went completely off, especially battle. I think he had like 21 or 22 in the in the uh, second half. Um, and we just did a very, very poor, poor job. Yeah. And is it fair? You know, I've kind of said this over the last couple of weeks and, and really going back before those two games that they were able to win back when they were struggling more. Um, you know, to me, the most concerning part has been defensively because, um, you know, you're just not seeing a ton of resistance like you can get by and not be a great shooting team. I, I know, you You know, you can't have everything go wrong where you don't have really a point guard. You can't shoot. You know, you have a center, but there's no space for him. Uh, and then you can't play defense. Like, you at least got to be good at something. Maybe that's the defensive side of the ball. I think they have the potential. But uh, and you, you posted that clip on Twitter after the Minnesota game of, I think it was, you know, at least one possession, uh, the one where Musa, you know, was just nowhere near, uh, you know, where he needed to be in help side defense slow to rotate. I mean, Minnesota got to the the bucket, you know, at will, it seemed like at times, especially in that second half. And give them credit for, like you said, hitting some tough shots, battle. I mean, some of those pull-ups, there was there was a guy in his face. But, uh, you know, there's there's got to be more resistance defensively. I think if you can start there, I mean, that's the difference in that game. Uh, you know, I think they lost by, what, uh, 10 or 12 uh, when it was all mm -hmm. said and done after a couple free throws. I mean, that's five shots right there. That's five possessions. Minnesota got to the rim plenty more times than that, than you know, probably than they should have. 
Uh, how do you assess the defense right now? Because it, for as much as going wrong on the offensive end, which which there is, uh, you know, I think the defense is a huge concern as well. The fact that a lot of it's just guys being out of position. You're not seeing communication out there. Uh, it's just kind of a big problem. What concerned me the most is that uh, Minnesota doesn't do anything fancy. <laughs> they don't do anything like this crazy hyper motion. Like they don't do that. Uh, very, very basic. Very, very basic. Um, there is no reason why guys should be lost. Um, that was that was a shell drill. Shell drill is when you have four guys on the outside, four guys on defense. The def- the offense doesn't move. They pass the ball, and the defense has to move to their right spot, whether you're closing out, chopping your feet, or jumping to the basketball. That was literally a shell drill, and guys didn't get it right. So if we're not doing the like small things like chopping your feet on the closeout, uh, moving with the basketball. What are we doing? Like, you know, it's, you know, if if we're not able to do the basic things, how are we going to be able to do the more advanced things? Like, how, how are we going to have the right communication on the pick and roll, whether it is underneath, not, not underneath, uh, whether it's on top, on the right, on the left, are you guarding a pistol? Do you have to ice now? Are you guarding it flat? Are you hard hedging? Are you blitzing for half a second? What are we doing? If we're not even talking about that, if you can't even do something as simple as close out correctly or being help side, then you know, you know, this team has a long ways to go. Also, with the defense, when teams are struggling offensively, they don't really want to play defense. Um, this isn't Virginia where that's your culture is defense. Um, Michigan's culture is right now. It just seems like, Hey, we're, we're going to go out, be better. And we're going to execute. and We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to play, you know, big and all that stuff. That's fine. But if the offense is struggling mentally, a lot of guys that doesn't really transfer over to wanting to play defense. Uh, and guys got to get out of that kind of uh mindset for sure. Yeah, and I think that's something when you look at Jawan's first two teams, right? Uh, You know, it it might not even have been something that he had to say to those guys. Franz Wagner was going to do that anyway. Isaiah Livers, that's the way he, you know, was raised, and that's just the way he played and was, you know, ingrained in him. Xavier Simpson two years ago in Jawan's first year, I mean, you certainly didn't have to tell him to have that type of mentality, even if the shot isn't falling. I could go on and on and on. And when you look at the last four or five years of Michigan basketball, Charles Matthews, I mean, name a guy. Uh, and they all kind of had that, John Teske even. Um, you know, so I think it is something with this young team that Jawan Howard and his staff have to figure out how to get through to them, how to, you know, make sure they get that message. Um, I wanted to ask you about this as well. So Eli Brooks, we're talking to him after the game uh, late Saturday night, and, you know, he was visibly frustrated. Uh, I had never seen him that kind of down. Uh, and, you know, he wasn't, you know, he was very quiet. Uh, but you could just tell he was he was very, very down um, and he was kind of, you know, he didn't name any names, but I don't even want to use the word, you know, the words call out. But, you know, it seemed like he kind of called his teammates out and, and not in a bad way. I, you know, I know that has a negative connotation, but he said, we're not physical. This isn't high school basketball. This isn't another conference, which I thought, you know, there's one guy on the team that you know played in another conference last year, uh, you know, and we got to be physical. You know, they didn't bump any cutters. Uh, you know, no resistance as we talked about, uh, you know, the closeouts are just blow bys, uh, you know, the help defense isn't there. You're not waiting for a guy in a spot and making him pick up his dribble and reverse the ball and things like that. Um, what does it do to a team? I guess, did, were you ever on a team where a guy kind of, you know, threw, I don't even want to use this word either, but I'll use it threw a little shade at the rest of the team, uh, you know, and kind of, again, called them out a little bit. Uh, and, and what do you think about the leadership on this team and how important is that in terms of having a guy like, that, you know, that can put his foot down and, and make sure this stuff stops. Cause sometimes it's not even on the staff, you know, to, uh, to kind of fix some of these things. True. Um, I will say this, I will say this. Um, so Eli, if you guys don't know, like Eli Brooks, you know, talking to a lot of guys who played with him, um, he's crazy smart. He's his IQ. He's the professor on the court. Yeah. His IQ on the court is ridiculous. Um, 
Have you ever been like the smartest guy in a in the room by like levels and levels and levels? If you've ever had that, then you know what that feels like in terms of frustration because people can't not only can't even come close to thinking to your level, they can't fathom even understanding what you mean when you say something. And I think that's what Eli is dealing with. I think he understands everything so much, whether it's what Jawan wants, whether um, how a defense is ran, uh, what's expected, what guys should be doing. Because Eli is always two, three, four steps ahead. And if he's the only guy two, three, four steps ahead, he's already noticing something out of place that's going to be out of place. Um, we saw it was a big play. I think they were down six and they were in a two, three zone. I think I broke this down too. They were yes. in a two, three yep. zone. They had basically two guys up top. They were in a pick and roll. Eli had to tag the ball handler coming off. Um, I think he went, I think he went opposite screen. So he still had to tag him. Caleb Houston was on far side in the zone. He was, first of all, way too far down. He should have been choked up a bit. As soon as the ball was passed to E.J. Stevens on the wing, Caleb, as the ball is in the air, should have met E.J. on the catch, quick closeout, while staying between him, while staying between Ball and Luke Lowy, who was in the corner, for like one second, just in time for Eli to get back to bump Caleb back off the ball. Something small like that in winning time, you know that Eli was thinking about that for multiple possessions. Like we just gave up two in a two possession game in a in in a Big 10 game, right? You know, this this isn't, you know, we're not playing Duke here. You know, we're playing Minnesota. Um this is a defensive slide. This is something very very basic. Just like before, like we're not chopping our feet. We're not moving with the pass. Shell drill. This is also a shell drill for zone. You know, it comes down to, it, it really comes down to doing the little things, man. And, you know, Eli knows that Michigan's not doing the little things. And that's super frustrating. And, you know, him, you know, he is a leader on this team. Yes. Um. But at the same time, are are people listening to him and really vibing with what he's saying? Right. Because a lot of these guys are new. They, they don't care that he played in a national championship. They, they don't care that he was in a Final Four. They don't care that he's won a Big Ten. He's won Big Ten tournament games. That he is the 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 uh, the all time leader in wins now. Yeah. Right. They don't. Like they don't really take all that into account. All they're thinking about is, okay, how am I going to um, make sure that I'm good this game? How am I going to make sure that um, if we do lose, it's not my fault. <laughs> so I stay in the, in, in the rotation. Um, sometimes leaders aren't always listened to. And yeah. I'm not saying that's what's happening here, but um, Eli is definitely someone who you would want. If, if he talks, if he talks, you need to you need to listen for sure. Yeah, and and you know I think his personality more you know and we haven't talked to a ton of guys about this you know this year, but when he started to become more of a leader you know last year and the year before when he was a you know true junior, it seemed like he really took that step. And you know you would hear more about his leadership style as taking a guy aside, uh, type of thing you know as opposed to maybe you know yelling and screaming. I'm not saying that's the right way or wrong way either. Um, yeah. you know, and he said before that he's kind of molded his leadership style in the style of Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman, who was also a guy that had the luxury of playing alongside some other really good leaders that had that strong voice. So again, you know, I think Eli is a great leader. Uh, he's a great guy to have on your team. You mentioned the IQ. I mean, that is exactly, that's why Jawan Howard was so excited when he decided yeah. to come back. But at the same time, someone I think has to kind of step in, help hold these guys accountable other than the coaching staff especially when they're young, you know, sometimes it can, uh, you know, I know Juwan connects really well with these guys, but especially when you're young, sometimes has to come from a uh, leader within the group. But uh, last thing before I want to ask you quickly about Southern Utah at the end, Michigan's opponent for tonight, this Saturday night, 
Um, you mentioned in your breakdown, you know, Zeb, Jackson, Kobe Bufkin, uh, how they did some good things against Nebraska. You know, I thought Zeb coming back looked pretty good. I, I you know, I think he would, he looks a little, uh, you know, skinnier maybe than last year, but he had about a month off, it yeah. seemed like, with an illness. But man, you, you, you get reminded, you know, how athletic he is. He can shoot a little bit as well. Do you think, you know, you mentioned Frankie Collins being a guy that, you know, deserves more minutes. Do you think there's some more minutes in the cards for those guys if they're going to try to figure this thing out? Because at a certain point, you can't keep banging your head against the wall. Maybe you got to try a couple different pieces and see how they fit. For sure. Um, Zeb and Kobe getting a DNP was very, very strange. Um, I thought, especially Zeb, I thought Zeb, the way that he guarded Alonzo Verge, a few possessions against Nebraska. I thought him just putting him on Peyton Willis would have been a little bit better uh, just to give Peyton some length uh, because Zeb's about 6'5", and Zeb is quick, and Zeb has long arms. Peyton Willis is about 6'4", 200, and he had a smaller guy guarding him pretty much the entire game, right? So I think putting him – putting some more size on him with someone who can move – uh, would have been a good move. Would have been a would have been interesting to see um, them getting a DNP um, was very very strange. Was very very strange. And like you said, you can, you you can't just bang your head on the door and just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. Right? You know, we're six to four now. Um, zero wins. No one win versus a high major team that was Nebraska, and. We have three games, right? We got Southern Utah. I don't even know who's Purdue, that. Purdue, Fort Wayne. Yep, on Tuesday Purdue, night. Fort Wayne. And, and then, then there's UCF. one more, right? UCF. Then at there's UCF. On at UCF. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Well, I don't know why we're playing that. Okay. So <laughs> I look at the schedule, man, and I'm just like uh, – I'm like, okay, Beli wouldn't schedule this. Beli wouldn't schedule this. He wouldn't schedule. I've thought this. the same thing. He would not have. You, Beli would not have scheduled Buffalo. He, he would have, would have been, said, yeah, especially hey. being from that area. He'd be scared yeah. to death of He's those. Like, things. hey, do you want to play Buffalo? Buffalo. He would have yelled down the hallway. Hell no. <laughs> he had a he had a policy. Um, not like a policy, but. Uh, he was very, very intricate when it came to scheduling. Uh, he knew it's not a pissing contest. It's not about, I'm going to play whoever, wherever, wherever. No, he was very calculated. He was like, okay, uh, if we're going to play a, a home at home, it's going to be against a pretty good team, right? If we're going to play and then we're going to have, and then we're going to play teams where, you know, teams that he's known for a couple years, that he knows that one will give us a good look for a future team, but a team that he could beat, right? Um, but he would calculate. He was like, okay, this team plays a lot like Illinois and Ohio State. Let's get them in. We'll we'll still win that game, but we'll be able to work on a couple of concepts, right? It's so like that's the way that he did things, right? Yeah. He would never do a home and home with uh, UCF. He's like, there's, there's, there's no, there's no winning here. There's no winning here. Um, sorry for that rant, but <laughs> okay. So you have, so you have three games coming up. You know who you have. You're six and four, which is unreal to even be talking about, right? Um, six and four, ten games in. Uh, the next three games, uh, you. If 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 they come out with the same rotation tonight, I am out on this team. If they come out with the same rotation tonight, I am out. I am out. I am saying there's no way this team is going to an NCAA tournament. Why? Because we've we have ten games to show this does not work. You could beat Southern Utah by a hundred points. I'm like, but this rotation does not beat the teams who you need to beat. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, I will be highly disappointed if 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 I see the same rotation. Uh, if if I don't see Zeb or shoot, I I need to see Adrian Nunez 
oh, I need to see some wild faces. Because then it shows me that they're at least trying or they're sending a message. Yeah, that's fair. That's where I'm at. That's Nunez where I'm be at. the message, I think. Yeah, it's put, in, put no. in Nunez first. Have a starting lineup. I, I think I, I was talking to uh, – Pretty sure people listening know who Wolverine Corner is. Uh, we were in we were in Discord the, the other day at like three in the morning. It was me, him, uh, Meta Wooten Peace, who people probably know on Twitter as well, and we were just talking about um, the the plus minuses with these guys. And I was just like, look, man, honestly, what my starting lineup would be. People are gonna think I'm absolutely nuts. But I'm excited for that. After, after after looking at the plus minuses, then after looking at everything, you know who the most important player on this team is? It's no surprise. Hunter. Who is it? Hunter. You need a lineup for Hunter. I don't care. Nobody else. It's all about Hunter. So what is the best lineup for Hunter? Give me Devontae Jones at the one. Give me Eli at the two. Uh, I have to write this stuff down so my brain works correctly because I'm a weirdo. All right, Devontae's one. Eli's at the two. Zeb's at the three. Caleb is at the four. And then Hunter's at the five. Here's the part that sucks about this. Uh, One of the power forwards minutes are going to be drastically cut. And that's just life. Um, yep. Drastically cut. Like, drastically. Um, this lineup gives you spacing, gives you an extra guard, gives you extra ball handling as well, gives you someone else who can create too, um, especially because Zeb has shown that he can create off the bounce without a struggle. Um, but that gives you three legit ball handlers in the game now caleb doesn't have to act like he's franz bogner because that's not his game caleb's game is more one two dribble right he was he was best in that little stretch these past few games he was really good in that stretch because he was getting to his shot early he was getting one two right into a shot He's not the type to hit you with crossovers and driving and scoop layups. That's yeah. just not his game. He's more Zach Irvin right now than Franz Wagner. You know, he's more Isaiah Livers. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's more Isaiah and and Irvin and Irvin too. And in terms of how they get their shots, um, and then after that, you kind of got to figure out the rotation. If Musa comes in, Musa has to come in and play with Hunter. Like that should be a rule. Musa should not be in the game without Hunter. So you got Johns as as a backup five potentially. Johns has got to yeah. be the backup five. Johns like as him. the backup five, um, and then you got to figure out Kobe and Frankie. Got to figure out Kobe and Kobe and Frankie. That is another big one. Um, if you look at the advanced analytics, Kobe's is not very good, like at all. So I think you take Frankie and you weave him into that trio of guards and you hope for the best. I think Frankie's athletic enough to where he could play on or off the ball with Devontae. If guys are playing off of Frankie, what's good is that he's so fast and athletic that eight to nine feet of gap that they're giving him gives him a full head of steam to really get past them and really get to the rim. Right. Um, So that's what I would do. Honestly, I would, I would say, Hey, look, and that is not me taking Musa out of the lineup completely. I just think that from a standpoint of you got to do what's best for Hunter. And nobody else, because Hunter is your guy. Hunter had what, like what, twenty and ten last game, yep. and really couldn't get a clean shot. He had and, and he, he had, had guys all over him. Yeah, all over him, every possession. I'm looking at, and then and then you watch Illinois Arizona. 
I saw that this guy Colby's one on one in the post. He's one on one in the post. The court looks bigger. And, and Kofi is the most the Kofi's the most dominant big in the in in the country, in my opinion. Three hundred pounds, seven feet. I mean, if he gets the ball within five feet of the rim, like good night, have a good one. But he's one on one in the post just because the perimeter forces that. It's like, oh, you want to leave Kofi? Oh, oh, you want to leave me for Kofi? Okay. I'm gonna hit you with this with this 40% dagger right quick. You know, Michigan just doesn't really have that setup. Um, and this would be best for him because you'll have Caleb and Eli, right? And then you'll have Zeb, someone who is who you know can shoot the ball, and he's a guard. Devontae, when given time, he can also shoot the ball. He just needs that confidence back. But I think that's the best lineup for Hunter himself. Defensively, Zeb is a bigger guard. He'll be able to move his feet. Caleb will be more, will be able to guard these bigger forwards and wings. And he won't have to move his feet by guarding all these smaller players anymore. Eli is a good defender too. So I'm not worried about defense. Um, you know, does that suck with, you know, because because Musa brings so much energy, he brings so much athleticism and length to the court. Um, but if we're having mistakes in a shell drill, we got to make sure that these things are being taught first before, and then then during this time they have to figure out how they could give Hunter the right spacing with Musa on the court too. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Devontae, Eli, Zeb, Caleb, and Hunter would be would be the group that I would at least try, would at least try together. And then from there, um, we'll kind of see. Yeah. No, I don't hate it either. And I, I've suggested that in the past as well, putting Caleb at the floor. I think he maybe saw a couple minutes in one of the first couple games there, but we just haven't seen that. It, you know, in right now is the time, as we've mentioned a couple times, to Start to maybe push a couple more buttons that they haven't uh, done yet. Uh, real quick before we go, what do you know about Southern Utah? Um, and, you know, this is a team uh, looking at some Ken Palm stuff, which I know you can't just solely go off of, but they are ranked higher than Tarleton State, who Michigan, uh, you know, struggled with. So, you know, not saying they're going to lose this game, not saying it's, you know, one that really they even have a good chance of dropping, but it's a team that could come in, give them a test. Jawan Howard said yesterday he, he thinks they're going to provide a good look for Michigan at the very least. Yeah, so Tarleton State, that was a game where um, you don't see teams like that. You yeah, don't see teams five play five big guards. Yeah. And they scrap. They play hard the whole game. Um, they almost beat Gonzaga, like, a few days later. Yeah, it was a know? similar type of game. Yeah, yeah, similar type of game. If anything, if anything, that game, I mean, it was like, it was like a two- or three-point game with, like, four minutes left. I mean, it, I mean, it was it got real. It got so iffy that I streamed the last five minutes. I was like, "Yo, y'all need to watch this." But um, yeah. So Southern Utah, they haven't lost a, a regulation game since November fifteenth. Um, they had a couple overtime losses, and then they won six six in a row. Uh, they're seven and three. Uh, they score a lot of points. They're top 25 nationally in scoring, top five nationally in rebounding. Uh, John Knight. John Knight is their guy. He's a 6'3 guard, averages like 18 and 5. Uh, he does not shoot the ball at all. He has four threes on the year. Attempts. 6'3 guard. Four Jeez. attempts. Made none of them. Uh, he's very aggressive. He's top 10 in the country in free throw attempts per game. Um, so that's someone who was going to want to get get to the cup relentlessly. Um, I believe he had like twelve free throws one game. Uh, they got to keep him out of the paint. This is another game. You know, six three guard likes to drive. Who you, put Zeb in the game, please? Um, Tevion Jones is a six seven transfer from Illinois. Uh, former four star. I think he was like around like a hundred. 112 or 118 or something in the country. Um, averages about 13 per game. Hasn't shot the three great, but he shoots a lot of them. So it shows me that, you know, he does have a green light. 
Um, Dre Marion is their six foot shooter. He shoots a lot of threes in 38% from three. So you got to stay with him. Mason Fawcett's about six, six solid average is about 11. Uh, nobody that should get Hunter and foul trouble. So he should play a lot of minutes. Um, but seven and three team who's used to winning winning matters. Um, this is a team who you have to punch in the mouth early. Uh, they've scored at least 80 points. Um, in like 70 or, or 80 percent of their games, like they score a lot of points. Um, so Michigan is going to have to lock down def- defensively. It's also something that they haven't done, and they got to be able to uh, score the ball a bit. If you know, uh, if it you know, if they're not able to play defense, so um, which is something else that they haven't done when they have everybody healthy. That's a good point. But, yeah, yeah. So there you have it. Uh, Michigan Southern Utah tonight. Michigan Purdue Fort Wayne on Tuesday. We'll catch up with Ant next week before Christmas, I believe. We'll try to make that happen as well. And then the UCF game on the road. And then it's Big Ten play for Michigan basketball. So, uh, you know, buckle up. I mean, it's uh, they got to figure some things out. And then they got to hit the ground running in January. Tough road game at Rutgers on, I believe, January 3rd or 4th. Uh, so it is going to uh, kind of get real quick here. The first few games are scary. Like yeah, we just stayed like, on the eighth. Yep. <laughs> they gotta figure this out yeah. right now, or they're not gonna go to an NCAA tournament. Yeah, or NIT because you gotta get it be at least five hundred. And this That's league, true. this league is tough, very very tough. But at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity for good good wins. Mm-hmm. So you no, know, it's a double edged sword. You're playing a tough league, yeah, but you can get a bunch of tough wins. So. Right. Resume boosters, they're they're out there. So uh, need them, definitely. need them. So uh, one dollar for one year at the Wolverine dot com. Ant is a part of our team. We're excited to have him as well. It's just a, a dollar. dollar man. That's it. Can you believe it? A dollar. Hold on, hold on. Is... One dollar for an entire year. Uh, so God, I don't even carry the cash. Is... There it is. That's all. That's it. That's it. That's one subscription. Two, yeah. three. I got three subscriptions balled right up in my pocket right now. Exactly. On, so, guys. I mean, that'll take you through next football season already at this point for that year. It will take you through next football signing day. It will take you this deep into next basketball season. Then you can always renew next year as well. So, uh, two for that for a That's dollar. A there you go. That's a two for two for for the people. That's a um, that is that's a dollar for like two seasons worth. Right. Man. That's not even a pack of ramen. That's true. So no reason not to do that if you're a Michigan fan, if you like the content over here at thewolverine.com. And uh, we will see everybody next time.